This is just a quick video I thought I would include in case anyone's interested. One of the pieces of equipment I picked up a few years ago was this small hydraulic press. I've got a large hydraulic press that goes up to about 40 tonnes, um, but it's too big to do a lot of the smaller work, so I'm, a, as you know, a bit of a fan of cheap Chinese things, um, and so I bought this off eBay. I think I spent something like £120 on it, so it was about five or six years ago now. And um, it's worked fairly well, uh, but there's always been an issue with it, and that is it never presses straight. And if you've ever used a hydraulic press, you'll know that um, if you don't line up the thing you're trying to press in straight and use uh, a sensible load spreader, uh, if you're trying to press, for example, a bearing, you can end up uh, twisting the bearing in the bore or on the shaft, and then it will bind up and however much force you put on it won't go in, it will just break something. And so uh, I've put up with this for quite a long time and I just had to be very careful with it, um, pressing bearings in multiple passes, um, but uh, finally decided to do something about it. And uh, the problem with it, the two major problems that cause it, it's, I mean the, the quality of the machine is fundamentally quite good. It's quite nicely made, the welds are reasonable, and it's quite nicely finished. Um, but the problem with it is the uh, press, this hasn't snapped off, I cut this off, but this normally sits on the underside of this um, bar, and there's normally a hydraulic jack that sits in this space. I've taken it out uh, so I could show you on this on the video. Um, but this normally sits underneath, and it's the end of this that presses down onto the workpiece. Uh, the problem with it is this wasn't welded, is this is welded onto the underside of this. We'll take a look on the underside of this in a minute. Uh, but this was welded on, but it wasn't welded on square. It's kind of canted off to the front or the back, depending on which way around you fitted this bar. And so whatever you try to do, it was pushing down at an angle, and the harder you pressed, the more of an angle it caused this to tilt. And that's the second problem. There's so much free play on this that however carefully you line up the center line of the press this always moves one way or the other so that's the other thing I want to address so I want to um, change this or modify it so there's a bit more guidance for this and I also want to put in something that's a bit more reasonable for uh, the, uh, the press down bar on the underside of the jacking plate so we'll take this off get it on the bench and I'll show you what I've got in mind So to address the first part of the problem, which was this not being fitted uh, squarely, this was welded onto here at an angle, so I've cut this off, as you can see, and I've machined a cylindrical pocket into this. Uh, I've gone slightly, about half a mil into the uh, bar. This doesn't carry a, much of a load across it, so this isn't going to be an issue. The force from the jack comes through this plate, and presses onto the back side of this. So uh, what I wanted to do was make up something that was firstly squarely fitted, but also isn't going to be prone to bending or flexing. So I've got a piece of mild steel, and this is, as I say, I've cut this as a circular pocket, a central bore, a, a recessed bore to keep everything centered, and then a hole so I can put a bolt in. And uh, what I'll do now is machine this so it's a nice sliding fit taper down the end so it's uh, about the same diameter at the end as the original maybe slightly larger uh, and then I can fit this onto here and having such a wide base area uh, it will keep everything very nicely supported so I'll get this into the lathe get this machined and then we'll take a look and uh, see what the next step is that's the first part of the machining done I've cut a shoulder drilled and tapped uh, M6 and then I've turned the outer diameter down so that it matches the pocket that I've cut onto the crossbar. So what I can do now is profile this end. I'll reduce the uh, bottom. This is upside down, of course. I'll reduce the bottom end, probably something slightly bigger than the original, uh, and then run a taper down to that. And uh, that should make it very stiff and should solve the problem of it pushing off to one side when I try and press in a bearing. So that's the part machined. As you can see, I've reduced the end uh, diameter so that uh, it's easier to operate the press and you can press into smaller spaces. 
uh, as I said, this fits into this recess. And then there's a screw comes in from the other side to hold it all in place. And that replaces uh, this. And of course it will be square because it's got a machined face on the, what is the top side of this and a machined face on this cross piece and a flat plate on the other side. So I can get this assembled, get it onto the press and I'll show you the solution I've come up with to stop this rocking about as it slides up and down the guide posts. Into place, just a single screw on the other side. And to stop this rocking about in the uh, or against the guide rails or support rails of the press, I've made these up. I machined these from a piece of 4mm PTFE uh, sheet, and these just fit into these uh, end spaces. So once this is in the press, this will uh, surround the guide rail, we'll have a look in a minute, and then these just slide in and they are captive by the slot that's machined into them. So I'll get this refitted, we'll have a look, and then you'll see the final solution. So that's the cross piece refitted to the press, and then I just need to slide these in from the end, and the U-channel I've machined into them will keep them captive, and it will stop this from rocking about. So I'll get those fitted. So they just slide in and that's the job done. So this won't now rock about but it is still free to slide up and down. So there's not really much friction on these but it does stop it from rocking back and forth. And then of course we have the uh, larger post sticking out the bottom. So I can get the jack refitted and that's this job completed. So I'll just get it reassembled, show you the final result and um, that will be this job finished. So that's the press reassembled and when I now try and press something in it should push down fairly squarely. It's not going to rock about, the PTFE guides uh, don't offer a lot of resistance but will keep it uh, on track so to speak. The diameter of the post is now much bigger, this is the original and you can see that the new one this is 25 millimeters, the one I've done is 35, and because it's a single piece and it goes out to full width at the top, it's going to be very much stiffer. And of course, it's already straight, unlike this one that was sitting at about a 10 degree angle. So that is going to hopefully make the press press more squarely. And of course, when I now drive the press down, it will go down nice and squarely and it won't rock about so there's no appreciable play now in this um, but it is still free to move and as I said I've made the PTFE guides so that there's no play but it doesn't restrict the movement of the press so that's the job complete and um, if there's any issues with it I will of course post a follow-up video but hopefully that will make this unit far more usable.